I just redesigned an electric scooter to make it shoot bubbles out the back when you ride it, and today I'm riding it around New York City. But first, I want to talk about what drove me to make a bubble scooter. Bubbles! <laughs> he likes bubbles. I like bubbles. But I've also been thinking a lot about how there used to be so many different shapes and sizes and colors of cars, and now they all look the same. We used to be so much more imaginative about what the future of transportation could look like, and yet now we have actual future transportation like one wheels, hoverboards, e-scooters, and they're just as boring as the cars. So as part of my mission to redesign some of the everyday things in my life, I decided to redesign my electric scooter. I wanted to make it both a better scooter with features like rear view cameras, blinkers, and brake lights, and also a more fun scooter with a futuristic design and bubbles coming out the back, because design should be fun. I started by disassembling the scooter and measuring everything inside so I could design my new enclosure around the existing internals. When I thought of this idea, I instantly pictured these big exhaust pipes coming out the back. Then I came up with this idea for this sort of extruded shape, which I really like, and it also helps hide the bubble juice tank well. The only problem is that the scooter doesn't actually fit inside this shape perfectly, so I had to cut off the front of the scooter. Hopefully it's not important. I don't think it was. It took me hours to get it off and I actually burned out my Dremel and went through 10 cutting discs, but I finally got it off. Then I decided since I had the scooter open anyways, I might as well replace the tires with solid core tires so they can't pop. This turned out to be so much harder than I thought it would be, but I finally got them on with some help. I also updated the handlebar to add turn signal buttons inside the handles and to put a screen to show the rear view camera feed. Bamboo Labs sent me their X1 carbon printer to use for this project, and this thing is amazing. It could print parts that used to take days on my old printer and just hours, which really changed how quickly I could iterate and sped up the whole project a lot. I printed the handlebar in carbon fiber and the handles in TPU to make them squishy so I could put buttons inside them. Because the parts are so big, I had to split them up into pieces that I welded together using my 3D printer pen. I've never tried this before, but I've seen a lot of people in the 3D printer community doing it, so I figured I'd give it a shot. I designed little teeth at the joints that have a one millimeter gap that I could fill in with the pen to make a strong joint. This came back to bite me later. I painted parts that would be near any LEDs black to prevent light leakage. And then I used Bondo to just sort of feather out the weld seams to get a super smooth surface. I also put in threaded inserts so I can screw all the parts together. I've been loving threaded inserts. Then I brought the chassis out to the garage where I sanded it, primed it, painted it, and put a two-part clear coat on it. After a few days of curing, I think it came out great. To make the bubbles, I pulled apart these bubble guns I found and then designed my own bubble juice tank and enclosure for them. I used filler to smooth out the exhaust pipes and then chromed them the same way I did my Bluetooth speakers. So the bubble juice is all stored in this tank back here. And then each exhaust pipe has its own pump that pulls the juice through these little tubes and then squirts it out of these little holes in the front here. And then these circles collect the juice and then the fans blow the bubbles out. This is what that looks like in slow motion. I designed this mechanism that goes next to the throttle and holds a little switch. When you press the throttle, it opens the switch and that's what triggers the bubbles. I just glued a switch inside the brake and that's what triggers the light. And I embedded the blinker switches inside the handles. I wired all these up through the handlebar I designed and it took a long time to get all the wires to fit through. Since the brake light and blinkers need to be translucent, I printed them on my resin printer. For all the lights, I used this super bright LED strip, which I split into segments for the headlights, brake light, and blinkers. For the final touches, I laser cut acrylic pieces for the headlights, the screen, and the top piece. I used an Arduino to control the blinkers and the brake, and a Raspberry Pi to power the camera feed. And I had ChatGPT write the code for both of them. 
At the last minute, I realized the battery I got to power the extra electronics didn't quite fit in the scooter. So I very carefully opened it up and reconfigured the cells so it would fit. It took me hours to wire everything up right. It was hard to get everything to fit back in, but with a little squeezing, I got it all to fit. Oh my god, this thing is so heavy. It's the middle of the night. I just stayed up all night finishing it, and I think it works, and I'm gonna go try it. I was super nervous about cracking the joints between the 3D printed parts because I figured that was the biggest point of weakness in the design. And I was riding it for a couple hours and it felt good. And then I started to get confident and I took it over the Williamsburg Bridge. And that bridge has these gaps between the sections of the bridge and the bike path. And I rode over the first one and it was fine. And then I hit the second one and I instantly heard this and my heart dropped and I knew I cracked it and I could see the crack forming. And I was like, okay, it happened. I'm impressed with how strong the joints are. If I were to do it again, I would reinforce them more and maybe even fiberglass the outside of the whole thing. But overall, I'm so happy with how well this scooter came out. It makes me so happy. Every time I get on it, I smile. It's just so silly. It's a bubble scooter. And I started this series of redesigning everyday objects last year on Instagram and TikTok because I want to design things that make people smile more. I think design can be so much more diverse and experimental and playful and doesn't always have to be so practical. So. Now I'm starting this YouTube series and a Patreon because I wanna work on bigger projects and I wanna share them in more detail. So if you wanna support my mission to try to design things that make the world a little bit more fun, the best way to do that is by subscribing here on YouTube and on Patreon if you can. I'll be sharing more behind the scenes content there. <laughs>